Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today, we're working on a 9RX640. This bad boy has a 15 liter Cummins at 640 horsepower. Oh, yeah, she is a beast. Problem with this unit is the customer says that the fan, the engine fan, is running full speed all the time. Well, there's only two ways that I know that, that can happen. Um, if you lose the fan speed signal, the fan is going to go to high speed, or if you lose the control side on the, the pump compensation valve on top of the hydraulic pump, if you lose the pulse width modulation signal from the ECM to the the uh, the valve, then it's going to go to full speed as well. So we need to figure out if this thing is actually reading fan speed or not, and then figure out whether it's on you know the speed sensor side or the control side. Let's get into it. Okay, on this unit, we got a hydraulically driven fan. So right here, we got a big hydraulic pump and there's our compensation valve on top of that pump. There's our control solenoid right there. And then it's got a hydraulic motor on the inside of this fan that's running this fan. So um, it's gonna change its fan speed based on the ECM inputs, such as hydraulic temperature, engine temperature, uh, fresh air temperature going in the engine and charge air, right? Or maybe if you have the air conditioning on, we need to run a little, the fan a little faster to cool the condenser off, right? So the ECM is sending a signal to this control valve right here. So we got a little coil that slips onto the valve stem here. So we're gonna go in and start this thing up and just see what she does. Okay. Oh, danger. Tripped on the floor mat. Okay. Contact. Yep. Now if we go into the, let's go on the menu here. Okay, let's go to Diagnostic Center. Let's go to System Diagnostics. Let's go to Engine. Let's go to Sensor. Actual fan speed, desired fan speed. Huh. No, it's running right where it needs to be. Wiggle test. Oh my! Woo! That'll get you excited! Now the fan's dead. Oh, I think we got a problem right here. Whew. I don't know if you could tell or not, but I peed a little, I think, when I wiggled that wire and the fan just went full speed and was jerking. Man, does that thing got some force to it. So yeah, I think we got a wiring problem in that there's a pigtail, so um, I think the problem is in the pigtail of the coil harness. So let's yank that out and see if we can't fix it maybe. All right, we're gonna yank this coil and this harness off of here. Nipex Cobra pliers to get this nut off. Let's see. They're not on very tight, they're just plastic. See if I can get that off of my hand. Mm-hmm. Oh, there is a, there's an O-ring there. Check. I didn't even drop it, can you believe it? All right. All right, looks like we got some Gonna need a trim stick. All right, I'm gonna get this out of here and I'll show you guys what we're dealing with. Okay, got this out. 
I think the problem is right here where this little guy was. It was pinched awful tight, but I think this was supposed to be in one of these holders, but it wasn't. Let me get this sleeve off. I don't want to cut it, so I think I'm gonna pull the the terminals out of the connector. So we got a little green terminal lock inside there. See if we can't peel that out, maybe. Hmm. Maybe a different weapon. How about a 90? There we go. Pop the terminal lock out. What we got in there now? Okay. I just got to flip up the little terminal lock. Oh, would you look at that? Well, there's the problem. Right freaking there. Huh. Try to get this other one. Come out. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. You could tell that that's been. You tell that's been broke for a while. Huh. Okay. Now I got a stuck terminal inside of this thing. It's always fun to deal with. See if we can't. Alright. Try this. thought by where I grabbed it was the problem but man if that was barely hanging on to that terminal there I guess that's what the problem is would you, would you please get out of there I mean, how many weapons am I going to get out to get a single terminal out oh there we go that was the secret right there pointy flush cutters for the win. Yeah. Look at that. That's been broke for a while. Okay. Well, shoot. Let's inspect this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's fine. So, we just need to put a new terminal on that sucker. Alright. Blue point wire strippers. She's been kind of hot. There. Now I gotta find a terminal. Oh boy. Alright, found a new terminal in my truck. I'm gonna try to use, I don't have the exact crimper with me today for these, but I've used this in the past and it works just fine. Crimped. Ease it in there. Until it clicks. Come on. There we go. She's in. 
Let's get this terminal lock in there. One would think it was in there like that. There. Just had to hold my tongue just right, I guess. All right. Let's get this installed back into the tractor and secured really good. Yeah. All right. Got that in there. Flush cut my zip ties. Don't be an animal. Flush cut your zip ties. And uh, got it properly secured down there. I did wrap a little tape around that connector to stiffen up where those wires were so they wouldn't vibrate and possibly break at the terminal again. So let's give this a try. All right, fire this bad boy up. Sounds better. Pretty close. I'm looking at the actual and desired fan speed here. Running about 1500 RPM. See, this page is pretty cool. You got all kinds of information here. I like that they put the fan speed there. That's nice. All right fixed all right we're back at the shop we'll get the fan working on that 9rx 640 um the customer's got another 9rx 640 that we're gonna have to go look at eventually that has a hard steering complaint so maybe the main pump stall pressure is not in specification maybe it's a little too low might be able to bump it up a little bit not really sure what we're going to get into on that one but uh i'll show you what we got going on here in the shop here we got a 9510R that I've been working on for a while, waiting on parts, waiting on a, a VGT turbo to come in. The, uh, the shaft is just super loose inside. The, the fins are hitting the housing, so definitely need a new turbo. Got a new fixed turbo on here. Did quite a bit of work to this thing, so it's kind of hard to appreciate how much work I've done because you didn't see the before and after, but had a major exhaust leak on cylinder one had a exhaust that broke off in the head and it was just pouring exhaust soot all over this the rocker covers were leaking oil so there was just oil and dirt and black exhaust soot all over this so that has all been fixed had to drill out that exhaust stud got all new long studs on you guys see me do that before new egr cooler Water pump was leaking, got a new water pump on it, new thermostats, new radiator hoses. So quite a bit of work and I think it looks pretty snazzy now. Got it all painted up, cleaned up here. So just waiting on a, a turbo. Also had to rebuild a couple SCV levers in the armrest. Um, position sensors were bad in them so did that and over here got a combine inspection going on not too bad not too much to do on that one but uh in the country i've got two more combines that i'm working on that have done inspections and i've started the repairs on and now this morning we got to go out and put a steering controller on a 9530 so not really sure what we're going to film from here, but uh, I'll take you along for the ride when I can. Oh, and I forgot to mention I put the new dry style fan drive and driven on it. Boy, are those babies heavy to get in there. But we got her done, so that was kind of a big upgrade right there. But we could actually get the drives, so it was a good idea 
just go ahead and put new in because those were worn out. I wanted you guys to check out Josh's new Maco toolbox. Now this is a 4S? Yes. And what color is this? Thunderstorm gray with a bright blue trim. Ooh, baby. Man, this thing is nice. We got the power. Oh yeah, and look, it's even custom built for Josh McCarty. Uh -huh. We got power. Oh yeah. And then, Underneath here is even more power, so that way you can plug stuff in and close the drawer and not pinch your cords. Oh, came with. Well, look at that big ratchet. Uh -huh. So this is where all your your extra tools go. Yes, because most of my stuff is in my service truck. Yeah, you got a new uh, snap-on road chest yes. as well. So that's where most of his stuff is. But still oh yeah, he still got her. Still got a bunch. She's got. He's got the stuff, man. Man, I really like this color. You got a power drawer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Man, that's really slick. You know, you gotta have a box to hold all your random stuff in, you know. Everybody's gotta have a junk drawer. Gotta have a junk drawer. You gotta have a junk drawer. Yep, that's a must. Just a few air tools. Oh, there. room for expansion. Mm-hmm. Nice. And of course, the light right. shuts off when you close the lid. Oh, yeah, let's shut the lid. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh. Boy, that thing is nice, Josh. I like that. Let's check out your new road chest. Okay, let's do it. Awesome. This is a brand new Snap on heavy duty road chest in red. Oh, yeah, so you got all your, your main sockets up top. Impact ratchet, tires, screwdrivers, picks. Oh yeah, metric wrenches. Yep. Standards. Of course, they move all around. Yeah, <laughs> you drive course. around. Of it's course. a road chest. It's a road chest. Yeah. Oh, ratchets. The ratchets. Yeah. Josh is a Matco ratchet guy. Other than this guy. Oh, I got that for you. You did. The handiest little quarter inch ratchet ever. <laughs> junk drawer. Uh -huh. You gotta have a junk drawer. Yeah, for all the miscellaneous. Oh, yeah. Ooh, punches. punches chisels. Yep, yep. Hammer drawer. This That's my thing. favorite hammer. I don't know. Me and that hammer get along. I do I do miracles with that hammer. Miracles have happened, yes. <laughs> Wrench pliers. Oh, gotta, gotta have them. them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Allen's and, Allen stuff and whatnot. I don't want to have to open this drawer, but I will. Oh, that's the oh crap drawer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. Well, you got a good start for being that technician. Plus, you got the you know the rest of the truck mm -hmm. filled up with stuff. But we'll we'll get into that later. I just want to show off the new toolboxes. Yeah. Awesome, man. All right. So I went out and I put a steering controller on that ninety five thirty. Um, they, it was set in a code for the instrument con cluster, the ICU, not receiving messages from the SSU. Um, even when you had the SSU unplugged, that is the only code that you would get. So I'm guessing that's the way the network responds when the SSU is not online. So that's just kind of the way that the CAN bus is wired on that system, but it had good power. I load tested the wires with a 55 watt headlamp and they tested good. Um, had good ground, had good CAN bus voltages. So ordered a steering controller, put the steering controller on, downloaded and installed uh, the payload to it. All the codes went away. The only code that was active was that the SSU needs calibrated, which is normal. Um, took the tractor out, heated the hydraulic oil to 100 degrees, went through the SSU calibration so the auto track and everything would work. And now that tractor's fixed. Unfortunately, I didn't get to film any of that. Um, I don't have every opportunity to film everything that I do, but at least I can kind of talk about it with you guys a little bit now. Um, after that, um, went back out to the other 9RX 640 that I was talking about that had a um, hard steering complaint. So um, the main stall pressure was at the low end of the spec for the hydraulic pump. So um, I took Josh up there with me. Um, 
the the dr for the main pump outlet pressure was kind of hard to get to so i needed his little body to fit in a tight space and get in there and uh, plug a gauge onto that dr um, we adjusted there's a screw on the compensation valve to adjust the stall pressure i moved it about a quarter of a turn now we're right about 3000 psi i think it was 2996 so um we're at more of the high side of the spec took the tractor out and drove it definitely has more umph in the steering so i think it's a lot better so we're going to let the customer run it this spring and see how it does um back at the uh, farm here been working on two combines that i inspected uh, s780 combine uh, back behind me behind this prayer um not too much things to get excited about on that on that thing just some uh general maintenance but uh here I've got the the S680 that was the hydraulic pump nightmare series video. So the uh, the combine that the the hydro pump failed and sent metal throughout the entire system. I did a three part series uh, on this company. No, I mean, it was four videos. Yeah, four videos. So one video of going out and looking at the combine, getting it ready, getting it hauled in, and then we had three videos um, repairing the combine, the, the hydro problems. And then I think we had a couple more videos, um, doing all the repairs after I did an inspection on the rest of the machine. So there was quite a bit of combine content on this machine. Um, it ran all fall, no problems, went back and inspected again, no issues with the hydro system or anything like that. Now we're just doing some, you know, basic maintenance, um, belts, bearings, chains, you know, stuff like that. So I'm here at the shop today working on that, but uh, I did get some time to um, use the new Milwaukee 3.8's high-speed ratchet, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. Okay, so here are my 90-degree weapons here. Um, <clears throat> the main ones that I like to use, I, I also have that one too oh wait there's one more yeah can't forget that one okay so i don't use air uh, ratchets anymore it's all electric okay so in my opinion you could probably get rid of this one and just keep these four this is what i would use all the time okay so let's talk about this so here we have the 90 degree m12 fuel impact this is the 3 8 fuel high speed extended reach this is the 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 3 8 fuel extended reach um regular i would call this one more of a high torque less speed this is just the shorter version version of that here um it's kind of big and bulky and you can't really get it in as many places as you can in an extended reach ratchet. So, um, I could probably live without that guy right there. Um, that was the first one that came out. Um, so I got that one. Then later on, they came out with the extended reach. Um, and then here you have the quarter inch fuel high speed. Okay. So the 90 degree impact, um, I use this whenever you've got tight to reach places, but the, um, the fastener is super tight and you kind of need an impact to bust it loose, right? So if you were trying to use these on something that was torqued um, really hard, you would have to use that as a normal ratchet and try to break it loose before it would actually, the motor will spin it off, right? So if you can get this in the area, I, I would rather use this. This is uh, more powerful and faster. Um, I think it's around 250 foot pounds, okay? So here, these two, so the high speed. So this thing doesn't have as much uh, breakaway torque as this one does. Um, this one's not very good for lock nuts, especially in uh, M10 or M12 fastener range. Um, it'd probably do okay with M8 or M6, but this baby has some speed. I mean, it zips. I really like the speed on it. Um, it it'll it won't jerk your your hand when you get it um, tightened. It just kind of 
stops at about 35 foot pounds. So, um, as far as ratchets go, I like, I perform more high speed rather than torque. I mean, I could always break it loose and then hit the trigger and then it zips the bolt out way faster than this one does. This one comes in handy when you're in a tight spot, when you have, uh, maybe rusty threads or you're doing lock nuts, a lock, you know, Something that's going to take more torque to turn, that's where this one's going to come in handy. Like the separator grate bolts have, you know, M10 lock nuts on them. This one would have a hard time struggling with those. This one's going to do it a little easier. So, you know, you got to kind of pick and choose the jobs for each one of these. But I would definitely say both of these are um, needed. This one you could live without. It is, you know, the same as this one here, but it doesn't have the extended reach. So it's kind of big and bulky and you can't get it in a lot of places. This quarter inch high speed. Now I would rather use the quarter inch than this one all day long. This has, you know, the same amount of speed that this three eighths does, but I've been using this a lot, uh, mainly taking small stuff apart, you know, the, something in the cab, whether you're taking the seat apart or the armrest or, you know, little things that you're using quarter inch for hose clamps, um, stuff that I'm going to be putting something less than a 15 millimeter socket on, you know, I'm going to be using this guy all day long. So that's my, you know, 90 degree Milwaukee collection. And that's why I, I have so many of them because they do have a specific purpose for, um, certain tasks. So yeah, a little bit more about that, but I am super impressed with this one. I, uh, worked a lot on the 9510R engine, um, with this guy. So I was zipping out, you know, water pump bolts and, um, clamps and all kinds of stuff with that thing. And, uh, it did not disappoint me. It did what, uh, Milwaukee will say that it'll do. And I'm going to be using that probably a lot more than this one. This one only comes in effect when I need more torque and less speed. So, so I would say 90% of the time I'm going to be grabbing this guy, this guy, or this guy. All right, well, here she is. A good old 680. I have uh, made a lot of love to this machine over the years. But, uh, you know, she's still hanging on, still going. So we just put a little bit more money into her each year and just keep the wheels rolling on her, right? So um, got a, quite a big list on this thing, um, but there's just a, a few things that I want to talk about. And um, we're not going to get real heavy into the repairs on this stuff because let's face it, um, I've done most of the, the combine work. Uh, I've already done videos on that, all that stuff, but there are a couple things um, that I want to talk about. Um, so one thing that we did do was... Um, Basically, we put, you know, new five-speed belts on. This has a five-speed feeder house drive. So we kind of got a, a power shift five-speed uh, gear case up there. So you can just roll through one through five um, to increase the feeder house speed. Um, we did bearings in this pulley here. That's not too bad. You take this bracket off, pop a snap ring off, slide that off the shaft, take the snap rings out for the bearings, pound the bearings out, put new bearings in you know, pretty simple. Um, did that. We put new, uh, pulleys on the, the idlers here. Um, they were wearing really bad. The belt was wearing grooves into them. So we replaced those while we had everything off. But, uh, one thing I want to talk about here is the real pump. So as you can see now, we have a updated anti-rotation bracket because, this hard line, so this is your supply line coming from the hydraulic reservoir, it was actually getting into the shield and, and rubbing on this shield. So I wanted to get that line off that shield so it wouldn't rub through. Um, before, you just have one anti-rotation bracket that mounts right here, right? And it's not very sturdy. So I decided to put the the newer style one on there and it will go on these older uh, 680s it's in the parts book and the 680 parts book but uh yeah that that's fun to put on there because i actually had to get underneath the machine and there's a hole in inside of the the side sheet here 
um, or you can get in and take the, the nut off the pump shaft, zip that off, and then you can pull this pump, leave the lines on. See, I didn't want to take the lines off because that can be a mess. So um, take the pump nut off so you can slide the pump and the shaft out of this pulley. And that allows you to get access to get these, the bracket and the carriage bolts and lock nuts all into place so you can assemble all that plus when you go to change the the belt you just have to take off this little lower piece and then that belt will slip right through so it's easier to change the belt um, before we were touching right here and now I can stick my hand in between here so quite an improvement on that wanted to tell you guys about that fix and the other thing I wanted to talk about was rotor bearings. You know, whether you've got a 9650 all the way, you know, up into the S series, I am now going to be changing the rotor bearings at 1500 separate hours if they haven't been changed already. Um, had quite a few rotor bearings fail last fall. Um, I think the main reason is that, you know, improper lubrication. Um, but guys could be greasing it every 400 hours like they're supposed to. But if the seal is blown out on the back of the bearing, then all the grease is just going to shoot out the back. So what you want to do <clears throat> is you can't see it now because I got the plate back up in there. But there's this metal plate right here. There's four um, 15s that you take out. You take that metal plate off and then you'll be able to see the rotor bearing right here. Um, so you take that plate out where you get a good look at it and then over here on the side is your your grease bank for your rotor bearing so you got your rotor bearing and the one above it up there right there is for your primary counter shaft bearing so while you're watching the the rotor bearing you want to grease that until you can see grease coming out the front of the bearing now if you can't get grease to come out of the front of the bearing you know, you could, sometimes you could shove a whole tube in that, that bearing and you won't see it come out the front. And you can't see it coming out the back. You just can't physically see it. So um, if you can't get grease coming out of the front of that bearing, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace it. So that's what we did on this one. You know, we're close to, I don't remember the exact number, but I think we're in the ballpark of the 1,500-hour separator range. So um, customer decided to go ahead and swap it out. So... Um, the rotor bearing, it sounds like a hard job, but it's really not. So I take one separator grade out. Let's walk over here. So I'll take this separator grade out right here. And then I will shove a 4x4 four four block. I'll lower the concave down all the way. And then I'll shove a 4x4 four four block in between the concave and the rotor. And then I'll raise this concave up until it stops. So that's going to support the weight of the rotor. And then I come back over here. Then you can get the, um, the bearing off. So you just take, there's four nuts that holds a, a plastic shield over it that also houses the speed sensor. So you take that off. Then you have a, a grease line. Going into the rotor bearing housing, you take the grease line off, and then there's four um, 24 millimeter nuts that you get off. You can't get the bolts out. The bearing has to slide off the rotor and off of those bolts. So with it supported, those bolts, once you get the nuts off, they should be loose. So if they're not loose, you need more pressure up on that rotor bearing. So take the nuts off, and then either... Um, we used two indexing pry bars to put behind the bearing housing, and then I air hammered on the, the rotor. This one fought us tooth and nail. That um, inner race of the rotor bearing was seized onto that rotor. Um, so it took quite a bit of effort. Uh, me, Josh was helping me, and we, we finally got that bearing off and got the rotor shaft cleaned up, got a new bearing on, but um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, rotor bearing maintenance. All right, so here's the rotor bearing, and it was a good thing that we replaced it because, you know, here's your seal was just, you know, kind of hanging out back here, popped out. 
you know, you get a bunch of dirt in your ball bearings there. Uh-oh, there goes the rotor bearing. And it creates a vibration in the machine that you do not want to feel, but you will immediately know what the problem is. So, like I said, this back side of the bearing, you can't see this. So if that seal's blown out and the grease, you know, going to go the path of least resistance, going to come right out of the back, you're not going to see it. You know, the, the rotor, this, this isn't loose. You know, the rotor spun okay, but, you know, if we were to send this thing back to the field, you know, how long is this going to last? You know, probably not very long. So there you go. There's a real life example of why I change, I'm starting to change these rotor bearings in 1500 hours. Um, especially if you grease it and you can't see any grease coming out of the, the front of the bearing right there. So you should be seeing grease coming out right here. Um, whenever you grease that thing. And you can tell this is original bearing because it's all painted green. All right, well, that's going to do it for today's episode. Um, sorry I missed last week. Um, didn't really have a lot of stuff that, uh, content that I wanted to show you guys. Um, it was a lot of stuff that I've already done before. So, you know, I'm not going to bore you guys with the same repairs over and over and over again. So, you know, I don't do this YouTube thing for a full-time job. I am a John Deere technician. So, you know, my number one focus is just getting my jobs done. Um, and I'll bring you guys along when I can. So I apologize for, uh, missing last week on uploading the video. So I'm going to try to be catching up on it as spring's kind of heating up. We're going to be getting more into some tractor work, um, which is my favorite work. Um, spring is my favorite season to work because I, um, I, I love tractors. Um, I definitely have a, a passion for, uh, tractors. So, um, we'll get more into some tractor work, but also, you know, while we have some time, we still got to work on combines. So, uh, right now I've got six projects that I'm juggling, you know, um, between the shop and the field, you know, so I'm just going to, uh, wherever I have parts for, you know, that's where I'm going and finishing up. So, as I get stuff done in the shop and then I'm waiting on parts and then I got to go out in the field and work and do stuff. So been bouncing back and forth, been doing a lot of combine work and it's a lot of just general maintenance that I've already uh, shown on this channel before, but uh, we are almost to 60,000 subscribers, which, which just blows my mind that we're at 60,000. So um, appreciate everybody that has subscribed, liked, and commented on the video so far. Definitely helps uh, grow this channel, helps spread the the good word on what I'm doing here. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, you know, uh, I really appreciate it if you would smash that subscribe button. And uh, also, comment below. Let me know what you guys like to see, and I will try to uh, get to it. Um, if there's some more, uh, tool stuff that you guys want to see, I know I've got some questions on what AC equipment that I use. So I'm going to be trying to do, um, a video on my AC equipment. Um, there are a few things that I would like to buy, um, for that stuff. So, um, maybe here before this spring, I'll make some tool purchases and We'll do a little video on some uh, AC equipment, so we'll go through all that. But until next time, keep that green iron moving.